Pokemon is one of the highest grossing pieces of media of all time, and it's just behind the Mario franchise out of the highest grossing video game franchises. Young kids have probably just discovered Pokemon, whereas older fans have been with the franchise since Red and Blue. Or Green if you live in Japan. I am not going to be talking about the Pokemon franchise. No. No, no. But I will talk about a media platform that came in 2005. Yes. If you looked at the title... Congratulations, you're not blind! Pokertubers. What is it about? While YouTube came into existence in 2005, Let's Plays were a foreign concept. Like seriously, what did people play for their games? Haha, <laughs> ridiculous. It's not like it turned into a category, right? With Let's Plays in video form arriving in 2007, the same year as Diamond and Pearl. Hunting. Maryland. Not saying he was the first person to do a Pokemon game, but he was the first one that was Successful, technically inspiring other people to make Pokemon videos. I mean, for example, Chuck Conroy, who is considered to be the best Let's Player of all time, was inspired to make Pokemon videos because of Maryland. Granted, I wouldn't consider Emil to be a Pokertuber, but... So you have Devin and Emil making a ton of Pokemon videos and then getting a lot of views, so what's next? A term called Nuzlocke was invented and was gaining popularity around 2011 to 2012. And guess who decided to do a Nuzlocke of Pokemon Emerald? Maryland! Was that surprising? Presently, he might not anymore, but he was the most influential Pokertuber of all time. So, doing Let's Plays kinda declined popularity in 2013. Based off viewer ratings, it kinda dropped. The only exceptions at the time were Chucky Conroy, the Rotary guys, Maryland, and Proton John whenever he decides to upload. And I guess Steven plays as well. So, top 10s are really popular and have been going on through 2011, but now we enter the j -Wits. Not just j -Wits, but THE j -Wits. You could say j -Wits was another key to being highly influential to Pokemon videos. Okay, I know this is kinda information heavy. You want me to get to the opinionated part of the video? Fast forward to now, there are different types of Pokertubing videos. Let's plays, top 10s, shiny hunting, nuzlocke things, analysis, reviews, leaks that are obviously fake, and actual original content. Can you see where I'm going with this? This is going to be controversial, but Pokertubing videos are quite unoriginal. Now, you're probably wondering what my opinion on Let's Playing is, and that, well, there are many different games. It's safe to say that not everyone will do a Let's Play in every game, so there is originality there. Also, Let's Playing doesn't have the same appeal anymore as it did 10 years ago. Which is pretty sad, I mean, most, well, pretty much everyone are doing streams instead, with the exception of Trigger Conroy. But he seems to be the only Let's Player that is not losing popularity. However, I doubt his channel will ever grow to 2 million. Board claims, I know, but still. There are Pokertuber channels that don't grow even though they should, right? Well, yes, but come on. With the exception of voice and opinions, they're all the same video. This applies to top 10, shiny hunting, and even doing nuzlocks. Oh hey, look at this one. Pokemon White 2 Extreme Egglock Randomizer. They are pretty boring after seeing it dozens of times. Cool flashy intro, but overall it's still the same premise with a different voice added onto it. Like reaction channels! Okay, not exactly like that, but not so far off. So, where does this come in to top 10s? Well, when you have loads of videos about mistyped Pokemon, well, yeah. Even when someone makes a video and tries to be original, I'm not trying to be the voice, the goody two-shoes, the know-it-all, but it's something that's been on my mind for a year, which I want to get out of my chest in a calm manner. The main reason in general as to why the Pokemon community on YouTube gets a lot of hate is because of the infamous Felicify. Ah yes, Felicify, the keen star of Pokertubers, as he loves to call people up for hacking, making clickbait content, and even making videos addressing the leaks. He's guilty of this! Maybe not the hacking part, but the rest of what I mentioned 
he's stunned. People call him the clickbait king. Arrows, shadowy figures, everything. And he even claims that he's the godfather of the community, which like, well, there are a lot more in-depth videos specifically talking about Felicify, so I wanted to just address him because he claims that no one has proved him wrong. Like a junior talking about the existence of Santa Claus. So where do I stand on people making videos of leaks? I'm just going to say this. You do not have to talk about every rumor you hear, unless if it's from an extremely credible source. Leaks do ruin the fun, if they are true for some people, so that goes for spoiler territory. I for one don't care about spoilers, so if you excuse me, Wait, what? Spider-Man Black Panther dies in Infinity War? Oh no. <sighs> Excuse me for a moment. <laughs> Alright. I can't travel through time before I made the video. <sighs> Look at me. Three of spoilers and redundancy. But wait. Is redundancy a bad thing? The main thing is, well, timeless content. Yes, it's annoying that people make the same types of videos, but it's just harmless. Clearly these people are doing it for the fun, so why do I have a problem with this? It's not that I don't have a problem, but remember when I said that this has been on my mind for months? That's because of the conclusion. If it clicks, I guess I'll make a video based on the conclusion, so I guess I have to travel to the present. It takes like a minute adding in the footage, so... Okay, back to the future. So, let's see how the vid did. Crap. Am I in the present yet? Oh wait, a note! Frick! So, am I going to disintegrate again? No? 